Welcome everybody, it's uh, Techman Pat here with Damon Ivory, who needs no introduction from Launtel, a very big RSB now. You're world, uh, well, you're nationwide now, which is excellent. So welcome, thank you for taking the time uh, to speak with me about uh, a couple of topics actually. Uh, you guys might see that this video is gonna get split into two, uh, but let's start with the big topic of the day. How are you going? <laughs> Well, it's been a yes, it's been a bit of a roller coaster today. Um, we, well, actually, a couple of days because we've had uh, we had yesterday we had the announcement around some business uh, stuff, mm -hmm. um, which to you know, in the gate past I was not that uh, impressed by. It was kind of interesting, um, and then the sort of news filtered through that some that they were going to announce a big upgrade for fiber of the node, mm. uh, fiber of the premises, and we're thinking, oh great, this is finally going to happen. Then when we actually listen to the press conference, we go, okay, it is going to happen, but it's not going to be quite as big and, and as we thought it is. I'm happy to go through the details of it. But yes, it has been a bit of a roller coaster. And, and just in, I suppose, those living under a rock or at least those who have still dial up, um, that is the potential that NBN Co will be upgrading up to 75% of fiber to the nodes connections to fiber, full fiber. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, that's sort of right. I mean, to be honest, when I'm not even quite sure that everybody's quite sure about the figures. Um, <laughs> it's certainly a good percentage, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's going to be over three years, and uh, it's certainly, unfortunately, not going to be everybody. Right, right. So, okay, so let's let's start with that. What what do you think the numbers actually look like? Because I think people can guess what fiber is, and they know what fiber to node is now. What the right. what are the numbers? <laughs> So look, my understanding is it's 2.2 or something like that million households where they're going to upgrade all the infrastructure in the street. Mm -hmm. And then once they've done that infrastructure upgrade, which is going to take at least a year before they even sort of really get going on it. Um, then if you, if you request a speed that's higher than your um, technology can deliver, then they will uh, upgrade your connection on so, request the thing is, is so yeah so and it's not quite clear how that request is going to happen whether wow. it's just we put it as an rsp we put in a we put in a thing we don't know how long it's going to take they'll obviously have to dig in uh dig a new cable into your house mm -hmm. um so it's it's sort of like my understanding is it's half the people or they're about roughly half the premises will have the opportunity so there's oh. some I, I read it somewhere where MBN are only expecting about sort of three or four hundred thousand per year. Right. So it's so, half of um, the people that they upgrade this street. Only half of those yep. might actually sign up to this higher plan. And this higher plan yep. will have a component in the price that covers the cost of the actual deployment. No. That's ah. the thing that's changed is there will be no charge for the upgrade. The, the, the MBN is paying for the upgrade. So if you happy uh, days, no <laughs> wow. Okay. Because if you'd rather be in the first place, that's the big, cause up till now they've had the, you know, you want to do a tech choice upgrade and it's mm -hmm. been sort of three, five, $10,000 to get this upgrade. Mm -hmm. That's the bit that's gone. Okay, and I, on that note, yeah, yeah. That absolutely. I mean, that means that people who might not necessarily afford a twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand, because the numbers sure. are crazy, um, will potentially get this upgrade. In that, I suppose, thought process, what happens to those people who, let's say, in the last week or two, applied for the uh, choice program, got their quote, and paid for an upgrade? What will happen? Do you? What do you well, think? Well, they're not going to be that happy. But um, to be honest, they shouldn't be too unhappy because um, firstly, uh, yes, okay, they will have paid for uh, an upgrade, whereas they would have got it for free, but they'll get it now. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas I think to the earliest people, uh, I think that people are going to see these upgrades are a, a, another year. Right. Um, so I think that I, I think that they will still get value from going ahead with it. Um, but yes, this was always going to happen. I always felt people who pay for tech choice, they essentially were bringing forward what everybody knew was going to happen in the future. Just nobody quite knew when. Yeah, I saw uh, Kevin Rudd blasting the current government on uh, 
on how they went after him for doing fiber and now they're doing fiber. Why do you think it took seven years? Well, it was the politics, uh, and that's the that's the sort of uh, disappointing thing about mm. it all. Is um, uh, Paul Fletcher is still claiming uh, that uh, the way that uh, the coalition did it was just to roll it out quicker uh, and faster and, and cheaper, and then uh, pay for upgrades as you go. Um, look, you can see the uh, the the argument. I don't agree with it. I think it was. Uh, I think. The, uh, the labor approach was the better one. Um, it was open to uh, claims of waste because it, they were delivering, you know, this super fast fiber to uh, somebody who's, ha- you know, somebody, an elderly sort of 85 year old <laughs> yes. who at the time had absolutely no interest even in the internet. They were just concerned their phone was about to get cut off. <laughs> um, so look, it, it, and, and I do remember, you know, the, the thing that, you've got to remember is that and this is why I've always argued that the labor approach was the right one is this is stuff that's going to last 50 or 100 years whether we put it in five years earlier or not is is beside the point um and and the thing I mean the way that they were arguing is it's all about cash flow and you know this is a typical telco model is you've Mm -hmm. always got struggle with cash flow you've always got to put out an investment, get as much money as you can back from it to finance the next bit. Arguably, this is actually the method we're using to um, uh, to roll out our connectivity throughout the, uh, the country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but that's the typical telco model. This is MBN. This is the government. This is, this is you know, an operation that can borrow money at ridiculously cheap rates. <laughs> um, and so a lot of those sort of standard rules just don't apply. Um, but unfortunately, Malcolm Turnbull, being from the comms industry with Aussie, uh, what's the Aussie email, wasn't it? Aussie, right. right. And Paul Fletcher, who's ex Optus, they all thought that was the right way to do it. Um, well, it made sense. We will you... never know whether the Labour policy would have yeah. worked better because it didn't happen, you know. It's, not, it's I guess it made sense in the sense that they put these people in uh, in those positions and this was a project that sounded like it's a communications infrastructure project and that the person from te- a telecom well, would right. hopefully know something about it. Yeah. So what do you think that actually could do to the NBN over the next, what is it, three years, I suppose? What What's three gonna years, change yeah. for them in regards oh, to that look- cash flow? You know what? That's a very good point, and 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 you know we need to remember this is still a good thing. Okay, mm-hmm. it's late. It should have happened ages ago, but <laughs> you know, great that it's happening. Great that it's probably been brought been brought forward by three or four years, courtesy of COVID, um, and and the need for better broadband, faster broadband. Um, so it is definitely a good thing. What will affect happen on MBN? Um, it will certainly improve its cash flow uh, because uh, there'll be many people who will buy the faster plans uh, that ca- they cannot now sell um, right so that will you know be a be a, a, an imp- definitely an improvement for MBN in theory that will also make it more saleable um, fiber is a lot cheaper to maintain than uh, than the copper uh, but they will still have a whole bunch of copper in the network so you know, it, it it's definitely an improvement. How much of an improvement is going to be open to question? Right. You, yeah. You mentioned there the that fiber is cheaper to maintain. How for I suppose a, a layperson, um, what kind of maintenance actually goes into a fiber cable? Is it just the maintenance of the cable itself, in regards uh, to it not breaking? Uh, the, the 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 cable itself um, is almost maintenance free. Uh, right. There is as long as a backhoe doesn't get involved. Um, or, or rats uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or, or the like. Um, nothing can go wrong with the, the fiber. It's impervious to water. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's sealed properly, um, and, and it's not hard to seal it, right? Um, copper, on the other hand, degrades over time. Um, the, um, uh, the, the conductor starts getting exposed to the water and that's when the problem starts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's when the maintenance comes in and it has to be replaced. This copper, uh, sorry, uh, fiber does not suffer from that. So right. it is a much more impervious. Um, and once it's sitting in the ground, not moving, it's uh, it'll stay there for, for, you know, well, literally probably 100 years. Um, <laughs> wow. But... And so for from an RSB point of view, obviously, this mm-hmm. is going to mean that your customers could potentially get much 
higher speeds and obviously pay more, which means you know more margin for you and obviously more money for NB and Co. But is, is that really going to be the case? Do you think that all of a sudden, as soon as somebody gets this connection, they're just gonna sign up to the highest plan or is that, the re is that just a bit of a pipe dream? Uh, our customers certainly will. Um, so uh, my, you know, we, as a business, we've always been about faster broadband. Uh, mm -hmm. We always want to sell the higher speed plans. Um, in fact, if I had my way, uh, we'd actually do away with speeds. Uh, we just go, right, everybody gets the top speed. Um, there's just no point in doing anything else. Um, right. And I'd love the price down low enough so that it's, nobody cares what speed it is. Yes, yes, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, but from our point of view, that this is you know this is great news because it it uh, suits our customer base. It uh, uh, we've been um, turning on areas where there has been more fiber. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we can sell our, our higher speed plans, um, you know, more more easily. Uh, or you know, because you, you can't sell the high speed plans to uh, people who don't have the technology to uh, to use it. Right. Um, so uh, obviously, the more people, the more the the more people who have full fiber, the bigger our market is or potential market. And so there's a couple of things I read today about it. And I definitely wanted to ask you about this. What do you think is going to happen to the regional areas who won't be getting these upgrades or at least the money that's been put towards them isn't necessarily going to get them fiber? Do you think those people are just going to be sort of missing out? Yes, I, I heard somebody ask a question on the press conference about this. And, and I've, I thought that they're... Um, hmm response was uh, w was pretty sort of uh, insipid um, it it was uh, they basically said we are still investing in fixed wireless we're still mm -hmm. investing in satellite uh, none of this will change um, I think uh, I, I think that's a shame because um, one of the things I'd love to see is less people on fixed wireless sure uh, one of the changes with um, the multi-technology mix is when they went to the copper um, copper has a real distance limitation. You cannot be more than probably about a kilometer away from the node. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, fiber doesn't have that distance limitation, which means that you can supply an internet uh, to a fairly dispersed community. So it could be a pretty, you know, either the outskirts of a town typically or a, or, or a just a small town that is fairly dispersed, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so those were originally slated for fiber under the original model. MBN came along, right, we're now doing fiber of the node. Oh, uh, if we put a <laughs> node, two or three nodes here, damn, we're not going to be able to cover all those areas. And so they would find that there was just no solution um, that was economically viable. So they, they stuck a fixed wireless tower in the middle of the town and, and pointed everybody at it. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the problem with that is that it, it, it may be, you know, they put up an extra tower for it but they probably didn't upgrade the backhaul. Um, and right. so I've seen a lot of areas on fixed wireless that I'm looking at this going, you're in a town, what are you doing? You know, what, what, what is MBN thinking? Um, and of course it's it's this this sort of, you know, oh, it's all too hard, but let's just stick them on fixed wireless. I was really hoping that they would do something about that. They, mm -hmm, they would mm -hmm. actually go back to those areas, roll out fiber um, and then take them off the fixed wireless. Sure. But, they haven't. I haven't heard anything about that. They may do it. Um, there is a uh, there is a fund that I can't remember how much it is, but uh, MBN have set aside an amount of money to work with regional councils. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the idea is that they get uh, you know they put in fifty percent and the council puts in fifty percent to help these regional areas. Again, we will see how effective that is. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the only thing they've announced. Right, right. And obviously there's another part of it. There's not just the fiber to the node connections, there's also a fiber to the curb and HFC. And yep. they were given a pool of money um, to, to do upgrades. What do you think AHFC obviously has been a bane of its own existence, the fact that they just stopped the rollout midway and the speeds and the problems that it faces. Is this going to hopefully fix all that or will they get a replacement of fiber? Are they just gonna upgrade to fiber no. or are they just? No, they won't. Um, so, well, not in this announcement. Right. They, this is this announcement they've made today is very much around fiber to the node. It doesn't even uh, say anything about fiber to the basement. Right. Just fiber to the node. 
Um, HFC was already un undergoing an upgrade path. Um, mm -hmm. That was, uh, you know, they're upgrading in theory to get um, uh, uh, to, to get gigabit. FTDC, um, they're going to roll out GFast, which will give, in th again, in theory, gigabit. Um, right. I don't know how successful that will be, um, but they're, they're going to turn those on. Those were already announced. Those were already in train, um, mm -hmm. so it's not really affected by uh, today's announcements. Um, so, But their plan, I believe, is to allow 75% of the country uh, now, I can't remember whether that's 75% of the fixed line footprint or 75% of the whole country, mm -hmm. um, and including fixed wireless satellite, uh, they will have access to gigabit, whether that's through upgraded fiber of the node or fiber of the curve, HFC, et cetera, et cetera. So that 75% actually includes both curb, HFC, basement, and node. Right, so it's not yes. just for node. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. That's the a... announcement today is just about the node. I can go and get. I should go and get the slides. It was one of the figures they did produce in there, but I can't right. remember exactly. What it was. And obviously, there's a, you know, what is? I suppose there's a question of. They said that there would be about three hundred, four hundred thousand people who would actually sign up. From your experience, do you think it's going to be more or less, or are they on the money? Um, I think it'll be more. Um, we we have been quite surprised by the take up of the gigabit, um, and we've certainly found that uh, wherever we can provide it, um, people have been, you know, after uh, <clears throat> after people realise they can get it um, and it's a reasonable price, yeah. Um, then a lot we, you know, I I I remember speaking to the MBN guys early on, and they were really down on the whole gig. They thought, oh. Yeah, we're doing this, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And <laughs> right. And and we were kind of going, yeah, let's just watch this. Um, you know, we've we've sold a lot of them. Um, you know, way <laughs> outstrip sure. outstrip uh, what many people expected. Anyway, so yes, I think that I think the take up of this will be a lot higher than MBN thinks. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, my thoughts exactly. I just thought you'd have a bit more insight on the RSP side, and and obviously, yeah, that's very true. What do you think this is going to do for 5G? I mean, that's the ultimate question and a lot of people go, but why do this if you're going to get 5G? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there is some that would argue this is uh, this is a way of defending against 5G. Sure. Uh, this is MBN trying to make sure it's not, not uh, irrelevant. Um, I've always thought the whole argument between 5G and MBN is a bit sort of fallacious. I don't think it makes any sense. The two are very different technologies. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I can totally see uh, the, the two working together. Sure. Uh, obviously, 5G is very much around mobility. Uh, whereas, uh, whereas the fixed line network with whichever technology, but particularly fiber, is around uh, you know the heavy lifting, moving large amounts of data around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's something that that five G will never be good at. Um, there just isn't the bandwidth to do it, uh, just in the spectrum. Um, but it is very fast. It's very low latency. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you want to get data there very quickly, then it's a great network. But it's never going to be cheap either. That's the other thing because they got because they got restricted bandwidth you're, yeah. they're they're going to have to price it to make sure that people don't don't overuse it <laughs> don't overuse it i like that because recently and this is probably another topic but before we move on to the uh i suppose a change of gears into another topic and i'll come back to what i was talking about in a moment any final thoughts about today's announcement um not really but other than i'm really glad it's happened um sure. you know whatever i've said earlier you know i'm not i'm not down on the whole thing um, and I, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, the next uh, 12 months and seeing how this develops. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. All the best with Lawn Tell, and I thank hope you. you have a good week working from home. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right. See you later. See ya.